the program for today. Yes, a diabetes drug may decrease COVID-19 death risk in women. Number one, why in women? Number two, why a diabetes drug? And number three, why do we say may? Why do we not say it does? Let's cover the may first. It's a signal. You know, it's a signal as opposed to an unmistakable evidentiary fact or evidential fact. When you're looking at science, you look at signals versus clear trends. There's not a clear trend that we can talk about yet. Why did somebody look at this? Well, for most of us, as we think about this, and most of us that have spent any time on this channel, it's really clear why they would look at this. Obesity, which drives insulin resistance, prediabetes, and diabetes itself are major risk factors for COVID-19. Not major risk factors for infection with coronavirus, but major risk factors for the cardiovascular cytokine storm that happens with a lot of people that turns a relatively mild coronavirus infection into a trip to the ICU and perhaps death. So if those two things are so related, there's a drug that's very common, very safe. Does that drug actually impact the risk associated with coronavirus infection? And the answer is, it certainly appears to do so. Now, this is an article that covers this. It was published in one of the Lancet journals, Lancet Longevity. It was published in December 2020. The title was Metformin and Risk of Mortality in Patients Hospitalized with COVID-19. It was a retrospective cohort analysis. Basically, that means it was done after all this happened. We'll talk about who they looked at. They looked at the cohort. A cohort is like an old Roman term. If somebody came into a unit of the Roman army, that unit was called a cohort. So in epidemiology, a cohort is a unit or a definition of a population of people. Now we'll describe the unit or population of those people in just a minute. But, but before we do, let's do a little bit more introductory comment about this study. So it, it found an association between metformin and a significantly reduced, now st significantly we're talking about statistically here, they saw a reduction for men and women, but for the total population, it was not statistically significant. We'll talk about that in a minute too. But they found a reduced mortality, death rate, in women with type 2 diabetes or obesity who were hospitalized with COVID-19 and were on metformin. Metformin, again, as we know, it's a first line, most commonly used, first option medication for treating type 2 diabetes. Now, we'll talk a little bit later about mechanism. Most of us, when we think about metformin, we think, well, it stops a thing called, or slows a thing called gluconeogenesis. That's a long, geeky Latin type word for, let's break it down, gluco meaning glucose or sugar in the blood or sugar, neo meaning new, and genesis meaning creation. So the most obvious and commonly recognized mechanism of metformin is stopping the liver from making glucose out of glycogen, which is stored in the liver. It doesn't stop it entirely, it slows it down. But that's not really the only mechanism that we know with metformin. The most common side effect for metformin is to have some GI distress, some, you know, gas, farts, diarrhea occasionally. And about 20% of the people that take this medication for the first two weeks or so when they get started, metformin has been shown to change the gut biome. And it changes the gut biome from a gut biome that's consistent with prediabetes or diabetes to a gut biome that's less consistent. So there's a mechanism there that's not totally understood Understood, but there's clearly a lot of evidence about what might be going on. But that's only two mechanisms of metformin. There's a third as well. Metformin actually has an impact on several of the known inflammatory markers. So metformin actually has an impact on inflammation. So obesity and type 2 diabetes have an increased risk of severe COVID-19 and death form from COVID. We know that. Why wait for a disease and hope for a cure? I used to be an ER doc. My name is Ford Brewer. I quit ER after a few years because it was just so frustrating. Most of the things bringing people into the ER are things that should have been prevented, including heart attack, stroke, number one cause of death, number one cause of permanent disability. People think that you're just going to have those and that they're not predictable. Both of those are wrong. You, they are predictable and you don't have to have them. Usually it's lifestyle. Lifestyle is more important than supplements and even prescription drugs and even stents and surgery. 
But the current times are tough. Major financial impact with the lockdowns that most states have been going through. We've been working on a way to make this much more affordable with a subscription process. And that's exactly what we're announcing today. We've got two levels. One is the silver membership, where you get access to our courses, a private webinar each month, and access to our supplement store and supplement recommendations and prescription. Or I would suggest even more so the gold membership. You can get a script for a Freestyle Libre and find out what your blood sugar metabolism is doing on a daily basis. And you can get a lab order for inflammation, OGTT, and insulin survey. You can also get a 30-minute one-on-one with me. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. Cost is no longer an excuse. So if you're interested, go to go.prevmedheartrest.com slash prevmed subscription or call us at 859-721-1414, 859-721-1414 or email us at myhealth at prevmedheartrest.com. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you.